Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm really looking forward to today's video because today is part three of a three part series. Now, if you haven't watched part one and part two, I highly recommend you do so. It was all about a simple way to stop punches and stop kicks. I'll make sure to post the card up here before this video is over. So today, it's all about a simple way to bridge. Right, so bridging hands, or how I like to call it, attacking hands. Closing the gap from short range, mid range, and long range. So guys, let us not waste time, let's get started. Okay guys, technique number one. So this one is all about the short range. Now, when dealing with a situation like this, if you see someone standing very close to you and they put their hands up, that is when it's time to bridge the gap, to go in. You can't wait because the distance is so close, you don't know if that person's about to punch you through the center line or from hooks and uppercuts, you never know. So that's why it's a good indicative that it's time to just move forward and bridge the gap. So today I'm keeping it simple. I'm gonna go in with a Park Cell follow-up. Now, let's say you've bridged the gap. So you've gone in. Now, from there, you're controlling the one side. Now, let's say from this situation, the aggressor decides to swing. See, you're controlling this arm, so there's no chance that that person's gonna swing back at you with this one, but there is a chance that that hand can come back at you. And if that happens, if he comes in, then you can just close the gap, opening your step, and then dealing with that one jamming into it. Perfect, technique number two, now mid-range. So when you're in a mid-range situation, this one is kind of dangerous because you're close but not close enough. So from here, if you make a move, you could definitely walk into an attack. And if you're a bit too passive and just waiting, then you might find yourself in a tough situation where you have to stop a surprise attack and you don't know what's coming at you. So if you're bridging the gap, for mid-range scenario, I would demonstrate how to sidestep. So then that way you can catch them through the side and not going straight through the center. Perfect, technique number three. Now we're dealing with long range. Now, in order for you to bridge the gap, long range, you use a long tool for this to work effectively. So that means I will use my kick. Now the kick in this case is more of a distraction for me to then go in with a pakta. Pakta and maybe even an arrow punch because we're dealing with long range. Okay guys, so that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button, share it with a friend. And guys, don't forget to check out some of my other videos. There's plenty of material there to keep you busy training and taking your Wing Chun to the next level. If you haven't already, check out my online academy. It's umauniversity.com.au. There's a free introductory applied Wing Chun course you can check out and learn from those videos as well. Having said that, I'll see you in the next one.